So this video is just to go over a couple of things that have been some common questions with solving trig equations. I'm start on page 10 and I want to rework number two. So we're on page 10, number two. It says that I want to solve two cosine of three T minus one equals zero. And it does tell you on the interval from zero to two pi. Okay, so the first thing that I just want to address is that the theta is called a 3t this time. I'm just going to replace it for a second with a theta. So I have 2 cosine of theta equals 1, because I'm going to add the 1 over on both sides. Divide by 2, divide by 2. So cosine of theta equals a half. So I want to find every place in the unit circle where cosine equals a half. That happens at pi over 3 and at 5 pi over 3. But the thing is, is that I didn't have a theta. So we need to address that. So right now what I've done is I have theta equals my two solutions, pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. This is the number of answers for one circle, which is what I'm going right here. I'm going 0 to 2 pi. That's one circle. I, however, did not have a theta. I had a 3t. So in a second here, I'm going to divide by a 3, because what I really have is 3t equals pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. But before I divide by this 3 to solve for t itself, I need to think about logically what this 3 is going to do. This 3 is going to shrink all of my answers, which means dot, 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 I have more answers around the circle. Yes, this and this are my answers, but I could go all the way around the circle and then go here. I could go all the way around again and go here and so on. So there's more answers on more than one circle. And yes, my restriction right here says one circle, but when I divide by this three right here, the answers will fit. So let's address that. So this 3T thing tells you how many sets of answers to write. On one circle, on one circle, I had two answers. This right here, I need to have three times as many answers. So I should have six in total, which means I'm going to go around the circle. three times. So to go around the circle, you plus 2 pi. In our case, 2 pi is going to equal 6 pi over 3 because that way our denominators are the same. So to this answer, I'm going to plus a 6 pi over 3 plus a 6 pi over 3. So that gets me a 7 pi over 3 and 11 pi over 3. And I'm going to do that again. I'm going to add my 6 pi over 3 and add my 6 pi over 3. So then I get a 13 pi over 3 and a 17 pi over 3. So my last step here is what I need to write down is my answer. I have 3t equals pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, 7 pi over 3, 11 pi over 3, 13 pi over 3, 17 pi over 3. I need to divide by 3 and divide all of these by 3. So my t is going to equal pi over 9, 5 pi over 9, 7 pi over 9, 11 pi over 9, 13 pi over 9, and 17 pi over 9. These are my answers. And I just want to have one quick little thought about this. Right here, I'm over 9. So 2 pi with a denominator of 9 is 18 pi over 9. Well, this answer right here is smaller than that, so it definitely fits in my restriction of 0 to 2 pi. So all those answers we had when we divided by 3, it shrunk them all down and made them fit inside of one circle. So all of these are your answer. Okay, I want to piggyback off the last problem, and I want to redo it again. 
So page 10, number two, sort of. I want to get rid of the, the two pi thing, the interval. I just want you to see what happens when you solve these when there isn't an interval. So let's say I'm solving the exact same problem with no interval. So two cosine three T equals a half. If it helps you, you can write cosine of theta equals a half. So your thetas we found in the last problem were pi over three and five pi over three. But if you remember, we didn't have a theta, we had a three T. Furthermore, I have no interval. So that means I have to account for all the circles that exist everywhere, plus and minus around the circle. So I can go around and around and around, or I can go backwards and go around and around and around, but I have to account for all of them. So that means my 3t is going to equal pi over 3 plus or minus 2 pi n, because cosine period is 2 pi, and then 5 pi over 3 plus or minus 2 pi n. When you divide by the 3 out front, you don't just divide the number that you found from the inner circle, you divide the entire interval, the whole thing. So you're going to get that t equals pi over 9 plus or minus 2 pi over 3n and 5 pi over 9 plus or minus 2 pi over 3n. So actually, when you're not given an interval, it's a little bit less work, but you have to remember to add this end part right here into your answer. So now let's go to page 15 and stay on the same train of thought. I'm going to do number one. Please note on page 15, the directions do say from 0 to 2 pi for your interval. So 2 cosine of 2 theta plus root 3 equals 0. So 2 cosine of 2 theta equals a negative root 3. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Cosine of 2 theta equals negative root 3 over 2. If you don't like the 2 theta thing, just call it x for a second. So I get x equals, where are the places on the unit circle that cosine equals a negative root 3 over 2? That would be at 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. We need to take into account that we had a 2 theta. So on one circle, two answers. Because of the 2 in my 2 theta, I need to list two times the number of answers. So I need to go around the circle. Go around the circle two times. See how those two keeps showing up? So that's what we're going to do. Let me just move that up a little bit. So to go around the circle, you add 2 pi, and for us, 2 pi is the same thing as 12 pi over 6. So I'm going to add the 12 pi over 6 to both my answers. So I'm going to put my 2 theta back in the problem. 2 theta equals 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. Now add that 12 pi in. So you get 17 pi over 6 and 19 pi over 6. Divide everything by 2. So theta should equal 5 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12, 17 pi over 12, and 19 pi over 12. So here is your answers for that problem. Okay, let's, let's do another one. Let's do number 2 on the same page, just because I want to talk about a very small thing I don't want you to get wrong. So page 15, number 2. Okay, so for number 2, the reason I want to do this problem is in particular the square, which is going to lead to a square root. So I'm going to add the 1. 2 sine squared theta is going to equal 1. Divide by 2. So now I get sine squared theta equals a half. And this is where I'm really afraid you're going to mess up, so listen very carefully. 
In number one, there's already a squared on the paper. That squared already exists, so I don't need to worry about a plus or minus. But this right here, I'm going to square root, and when I make a new square root appear on the paper that wasn't there to start with, I have to deal with the plus or minus sign. So you get sine of theta equals plus or minus the square root of a half, which is plus or minus with a fraction, it's plus or minus the uh, numerator square rooted over the denominator square rooted, which gets me plus or minus 1 over root 2 which we rationalize by multiplying by root 2 over root 2. So what I really need to have now is sine theta equals plus or minus root 2 over 2. So that's why I did this problem. Now the theta is going to be where does sine, the y value, equal root 2 over 2. So that happens at all my 45. So my pi over 4, my 3 pi over 4, my 5 pi pi over 4 and my 7 pi over 4. So there's your answers for number 2. Be careful the same thing with number 3. Let's look at this page, page 15 still. I want to look at number 4. Be careful guys, do never ever 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 divide by a trig function. If you divide by a trig function or cancel trig function out, you cancel out answers. So let's not do that. Because this has a square, it's a quadratic, and you always factor quadratics. So let's make this equal 0 so that I can factor. So when I do that, these both have a sine in common. So I pull out a sine theta. Here, let me rewrite this. This is the same thing as sine theta times a sine theta minus a sine theta. So I'm taking a sine theta out of both of them. So when I do that, I get left with a sine theta and then a minus 1. There's a 1 here. Please don't forget your placeholder 1. This thing right here is called the zero product property. What it says is that you have two things multiplied, A and B. They equal zero. The only way to take things that are multiplied and make them equal zero is if one of the pieces itself equals zero. Oops, sorry. If one of the pieces itself equals zero. So this is like my A, and this whole thing right here is like my B. So I'm going to set each piece equal to 0. So sine theta equals 0. Sine theta minus 1 equals 0. Well, for this one, sine equals 0 at 0 and pi. For this one, I have to add the 1 over, so I get sine theta equals 1, and that happens at pi over 2. So you have here three answers, 2 from right here, and one from right there. So there's your three answers. Okay, I want to do two more problems because they focus on factoring. And I think that you and factoring are not the best of friends all the time. So let's review because you can do it. I think you've just forgotten a little bit. So let's start with number six because it, it's a good place to start. So I have cosine squared theta minus four cosine theta equals five. It's a quadratic, so we want to make it equal 0. So cosine squared theta minus 4 cosine theta minus 5 equals 0. I'm going to do this the long way just in case you remember how to factor. And if you factor by box method, you are welcome to reach out to me or your teacher if I am not your teacher. And we will walk through the box method with you. I just personally don't like the box method. I prefer factor by grouping, which I'll do in a second. Uh, or actually in the next problem, because on this one, my leading coefficient is 1. So when you learn to factor, or even in your box, you would do the first number, that a, times the c, which is negative 5. You need two factors of negative 5 that multiply to make negative 5, but add to make negative 4. Well, that's a negative 5 and a um, negative, nope, sorry, a positive 1. So when I write this, I'm going to put the similar terms together. So I'm going to rewrite this. This is factored by grouping. I'm going to rewrite that middle term, cosine squared theta. And out at the end down here, I have my minus 5 equals 0. And in my yellow, I'm going to rewrite this middle term. That middle term is really plus 1 cosine theta minus 5 cosine theta. They add back up to my negative 4. So let's make a group. Here's a red group. My red group has a cosine in common. And when you pull out the cosine, you're left with cosine theta and a plus 1. Then I have this green group. They have a minus 5 in common, which gets me a cosine theta plus a 1. 
I love factor by grouping for this reason. These things in parentheses, if you did it right, will always match. That's how you know you did it right, which is why I like factor by grouping. So in my green group and in my red group, I've underlined in blue a similar term, a cosine theta plus 1. So I'm going to factor out my cosine theta plus 1. And then in my red group, I'm left with a cosine theta. And in my green group, a minus 5 equals 0. And now you're going to use that zero product property thing. You're going to set each piece equal to 0. So cosine theta equals, oops, cosine theta, sorry, I skipped a step. Cosine theta minus, or plus 1 equals 0. Cosine theta minus 5 equals 0. So cosine theta equals negative 1, and cosine theta equals 5. I want to start here and cross this one off. Cosine is an equal 5. Cosine on the unit circle goes from negative 1 to 1. So that part doesn't have my answer. But cosine does equal negative 1. And for theta, that happens at a pi. So here's my one answer for this problem. Um, numbers... 5, 6, no, sorry, 5, 7, and 9 on page 15 are all more factoring. Um, so let's try that. Let's try, I'm going to do number 2 because there's a leading coefficient, or 7 because there's a leading coefficient. So I'm still on page 15, number 7. 2 tan squared theta equals 3 tan theta minus 1. There's a, a squared or a quadratic, so remember we want to make it equal 0. So that's going to get me a 2 tan squared theta minus 3 tan theta plus a 1 equals 0. I moved these over to the other side. We're going to do the same thing we did in the last problem. My a times my c. 2 times 1 is 2. I need two factors of negative 2 that add up and give me negative 3. So negative 2 and negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite that middle term. 2 tan squared theta minus 2 tan theta minus 1 tan theta plus 1 equals 0. So these are a red group and these are a green group. My red group has a 2 tan theta in common. I'm left with a tan theta minus 1. My green group has a minus 1 in common. <clears throat> and I have a, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, a tan theta minus 1 equals 0. My red and green group both have a tangent theta minus 1. And then in red, I have 2 tan theta minus 1 equals 0. So now I'm going to have tan theta minus 1 equals 0, 2 tan theta minus 1 equals 0, tangent theta equals 1, and tangent theta equals a half. I just want to make a quick note for all intensive purposes of this test. Use a calculator. So pre-AP kids, it's a non-calculator test. So this kind of problem won't show up. If it were to be on the test, this would have to be, oh, I'm so sorry. If we're going to be on the test, this would have to be a sine theta or a cosine theta. You don't know tangent equals one half off the unit circle. It happens, but you need a calculator. So this piece happens. Hear me, it happens. But we'd have to use a calculator. You won't have a calculator on this test, so don't worry about it for this test. But let's finish this side of the problem over here. So tangent of theta equals 1 at pi over 4 and at 5 pi over 4. The whole reason of me doing this problem is I wanted to make sure we could factor when we have a number, an A, that's bigger than 1. So make sure you know how to factor, kiddos. Hopefully this video helps you out a little bit.